whatever you're doing. Stop. So now we have the third chapter in the Cloverfield franchise called The Cloverfield Paradox, which is a Netflix original. But what did I think about it? Well, my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for The Cloverfield Paradox, a Netflix original. I do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help your boy out by clicking that subscribe button. Also, click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads and give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So, you know, the Super Bowl was yesterday and then out of nowhere, they dropped the trailer and was like, hey, Cloverfield is on Netflix top right now. It's on Netflix tonight. You can watch it. Nobody knew it was going to be dropping like that. And I was like, oh, man, I don't know either. I was real tired. I didn't want to watch it last night, you know, but I watched it early this morning, like really, 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 really early. And now I just want to talk about it. Now, the first Cloverfield came out January of 2008. I remember that. Uh, I remember I took a little date to go to that movie and we both uh we both enjoyed the movie and we had a good date uh we talked about the movie afterwards uh so i, I really did enjoy it um i liked all the mystery that it had to go um like you know with that movie all the undertones and all the it still didn't reveal everything but you know we it, it revealed a lot towards the end and then of course 2000 was a 16 we had 10 cloverfield lane really did enjoy that film as well didn't enjoy it as much as the first one because uh, you know, it was it was really uh, constricted to uh, the basement and underground. Um, you know, it wasn't people running around and, you know, destruction everywhere and chaos, but it was still a great movie. But I remember it kind of being frustrated, like, oh, it's not really relating uh, that much to the first Cloverfield movie as much as I want. But then we found out that we're getting more and more and more Cloverfield lanes. We just got this third one and we're getting a, a fourth one later on as well. And so when I, when I saw the Super Bowl TV spot for this one, I was like, okay, man, this is going to directly tie in with 2008 you know i'm on board that's what's up so and i'll talk about that in a second first thing i got to talk about is the cast of this movie this is a great cast we got google and bathara we got david oyelowo we got daniel brule we got zhang ziyi you know what i'm saying she was in rush hour she was in crown to tiger hidden dragon you know david oyelowo uh he played um uh, martin luther king and uh selma uh, he's been in a number of things. Uh, Daniel Brühl, he was uh, Zemo in Captain America Civil War. He was also in the movie with Chris, Chris Hemsworth based on a true story. I believe it was called Rush. And um, and uh, what was his name? Google and Bathara. Man, she's so beautiful. I should have wrote that. I thought I had all this memorized, but, you know, that's okay. She had, uh, was it Belle? I can't remember, but she's freaking fantastic. But um, the cast is freaking great. Uh, I was on board with the cast. I didn't even pay attention to it before the movie started. But, um, you know, as it was starting and I was seeing all the names pop up and all the credits, opening credits, I was like, oh, man, this is a great cast. There's other people, too. But I just didn't name them here. And, um, you know, I, this is going to be a spoiler review. Spoiler feel. Um, it's very difficult to talk about this movie without getting to spoilers. So if you haven't seen it, that's OK. It's on Netflix right now. Um, you know, go uh, watch it. If you don't have a subscription, go subscribe or whatever. Um, you know, it, it, it's great. But what it is about is the energy on Earth is depleting. They only have five years left. And if we don't, if the scientists in this movie don't come up with some solution within five years, there's not going to be any energy left. So they go up into space. They have this particle accelerator and they're firing it off to trying to get this thing to work. And they're up there for two. They was only supposed to be up there for six months, but they end up being up there for six, um, not six years, but for uh, two years, a little over two years. And, you know, time is running out. And so what what I I did not like early on in this film is the exposition by the author at the very beginning. You know, like it was just too on the nose. Like I'm like, dude, you you could have gave they could have gave him some better dialogue. Him talking about well, monsters and demons and demons are gonna come. Now, I, I just don't I don't see you know the way they were trying to portray him as just some best selling author, a scientist himself, a guy that you know um uh, um uh, uh, um. A genius or just somebody that knew what he was talking about a specialist i don't see someone like that talking that way i think that they would you know just you know be able to articulate themselves better with a larger vocabulary um and i just wasn't buying it from that point of view but then again uh going back i did like the cast so they fire off this particle accelerator um it goes crazy uh you know you have explosions you have glass breaking gravity shooting them up and down and they end up going to another dimension and they don't know that yet and what 
I was really feeling early on in the beginning is because I was like, okay, wow, what they're doing is with them, you know, uh, firing off this particle accelerator, you know, they're colliding different universes and dimensions and things like that and pulling monsters and, and beings and things like that from other dimensions. That's where the monster comes from. So I was liking that. But there were just so many things in the movie that was just kind of unnecessary to me that made it seem a bit corny and just completely unnecessary. I mean, this could this film is not immature, but it could have been more. It, it's not childish, but it, it could have been more mature. You know, like there were just some things that just was unnecessary to me, like one character, how all the worms ended up being inside of his body. And then, you know, the little device, the orb that kind of was the main engine to the whole space station. How that ended up inside him or the one guy when he had his arm in the window, not the window, uh, but the wall and the wall was moving around and cut off his arm. It's like, you know, I mean, you know, I don't mind those things being in the movie, but at some point I do want some type of better explanation that they could have just they were saying that, hey, you know, worlds are colliding upon each other dimensions and things like that. But that was just kind of like a cheap trick just to make this movie seem like, oh, my God, I can't believe what they're doing. And I mean, you can do that, but you just I, I just like need a better uh, explanation as far as Google and Bothera is concerned. I like her arc in the story, but early on, I was very pissed off with her. I thought she was a stupid character because she was just like, you know, uh, we got to open up the wall when the lady ended up being in the wall from the other dimension. I'm like, you don't know what's freaking in there or whatever. Like you either th you, you, then they're thinking that they blew up the earth and somebody was screaming in the wall. Like, you know, like, I mean, she she just had no reserve or whatever. Like, go grab a wrench or something, you know, brace up or whatever, you know, be ready to attack whatever is screaming on the other side of the wall that shouldn't be there. You know, she she just wasn't using her logic. And I just really wasn't feeling that right there. I mean, she was, you know, you I, I don't know. I mean, um, she didn't know that she was in. It's, this is not a horror movie. Um, you know, this is a science fiction, I guess, suspense thriller. She didn't know that she was in the movie. So it's kind of like, you know, it's a different perspective for me. But I'm, I'm putting myself in her shoes and I'm just like, I would not be doing that there. But um, other things in the movie, you know, I talked about the worms and the device being in this in the guy's stomach. And then the the uh, the, um, the guy's arm getting cut off. I did not care about any of the characters except for Google and Bothera. Uh, when everybody was dying off, it, it I didn't really feel anything. I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. But, you know, there, there was nothing that they did to make me connect to them. Uh, only reason I connected to Google and Bothera is because she had a husband down on Earth. And then we also found out that she had some children that she killed, you know, by accident or whatever. So, you know, that really did humanize her character and was able to make me attach myself. But everybody else was just kind of like, you know, either panicking or nervous. Or you had a couple of other characters that were just kind of selfish and wanting to do their own thing. I do like the fact that there were the the scientists and the, um, the, the um, specialists and all that good stuff, the experts, they were from different parts of the world. You know, we had America, we had Great Britain, we had China, we had Russia, we had Germany. You know, we had all that good stuff. That makes sense. You know, I get that. I like that. I like that they had Zhang Ziyi actually speaking Chinese, actually speaking Mandarin. You know, I, I did like that. That was dope. So, you know, that's great there. But I wish they would have done more with the characters. I mean, I wouldn't mind if this movie it was two hours two hours 15 minutes but it was only an hour and 45 minutes you know um so um i just really didn't care about the characters and you know i just like what i i really wanted a big payoff and i really didn't feel like i got a big payoff at the end of this movie i feel like it confused me even more and just opened so many doors for them to write whatever they want in the future because i was just thinking to myself like this the technology they use in this film um it can't be present day i don't I, I just think that this is in the future but at the same time early in the film they talked about you know dimensions and things like that going from the you know time and space continuum going from the present past and the future so i don't know what timeline they're in exactly i mean when they sent the animal there 
and they crashed back on Earth at the very end. You know, was that like the present day or was that the future? But at the same time, on my research, that monster at the very beginning of the film, at the very end of the film, was much, you know, that's supposed to be the same monster from the very beginning. That's what one of these articles I read said. But that monster was really small. This one was through the clouds. So did they send the monster to the past and they came back in the present? You know, it's just too many questions that are unanswered for me. And I just kind of really feel um, let down. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know. Um, it, it was entertaining. I, I think everybody should go see it. But at the same time, this was not remotely close as good as the other Cloverfield movies. The first one was the best. The second one, um, you know, it, yeah, in order. The first one's the best. Second one, second best. Third one is the is the worst to me. It's not a horrible film, but it's not anything that I can just say, hey, man, you've seen it. You know, I wouldn't tell you to go to the movies to see it, like, because this is a Netflix original. Um, you know, so I, I guess that's why. It's like kind of, I don't even want to call it a B movie, but I just want it more. And, you know, I just have to be honest with that assessment. Um, if I have to give Cloverfield, um, the Cloverfield Paradox a rating of a 1 out of 10, I'm going to give it a 5.5 out of 10. Yes, a 5.5 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen uh, The Cloverfield Paradox on Netflix? Or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Go to my website, Bookmark It. Check me out there. Also, look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of the screen and i made it very easy by providing a link to all that down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review uh spoiler review for the uh cloverfield paradox and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon kithavery and that's just my opinion peace